All right, I am here with Amy Newman. Amy is from the central coast of California and fairly new to raising quail, right, Amy? Very new. How did you get into raising quail? Well, we've had chickens for a really long time, over 10 years. We taken a break and have been back for a few years with chickens and just loving them. I started hearing about quail for me and what a high production of eggs that they made. It's so much food for a small amount of space and the birds can still be happy in that smaller space. And while we already had chickens and we've done meat chickens before a couple of times, it's, it's a lot of work. Raising your own food comes with work, that's okay. But I knew I couldn't do it on my own. So if we were to add another project, <laughs> I knew it needed to be something I could do totally on my own. So that got me curious. I started kind of listening to YouTube. I barely even mentioned it to my husband. But then after listening to so many podcasts and YouTubes and online meetups for quail, I started hearing over and over people talking about autoimmune healing and Lyme and all these people saying that anecdotally it had helped them in their healing. And after a recent diagnosis of celiac with my daughter and some her body having bigger sensitivities and reactions, I was looking anywhere I could to help her, especially with just food and something joyful, like something in the garden. So then the night I told my husband, we ordered 90 Celadon quail <laughs> eggs. Oh my God, you jumped in. I did. So I started hearing it and then I did my research and I basically showed my husband and I actually found published research on EPUB as well in it being used to treat a lot of things just as a food, not isolating any proteins or any properties just as a food. So yes, we jumped in big because we're, we're already out in the garden. We're already taking care of chickens. Why not add them? Also, I did take Quail University. I did take that course. I listened to hours and hours, such as my husband, of YouTube and some podcasts. And, uh, and I learned so much from those. But the organization of the Quail University and the spreadsheets alone really really helped me in planning and in moving forward for the year on how just doing the math for me. If I want to feed my family five pounds a month of quail, then I need to raise this many chicks. And it, it does the math for you. So those spreadsheets alone are worth the quail university. And you didn't bring it up and you didn't ask me to mention that, but it was very empowering. I learned just a few tips I'd never heard somewhere else that made such a, a big difference. So backing up a little bit, you said you started with celadons. What made you decide to start there? Blue eggs. I fell in love with those little blue eggs. Now we have jumbo pharaohs as well. So the speckled will be coming in. I'm excited about those. Uh, I would say quail eggs are popular here where I live, but no one had heard or seen a blue egg that I could find. So I also thought in order for me to add this thing for it to pay for itself, why not choose something more unique that other people aren't selling? And now I've fallen in love. Their personalities are quite different. Even though there's a variety of colorings, they seem a little different than the jumbo pharaohs. Tell me more about that. In what way are they different? They seem a little calmer and a little more curious to me, just slightly. Whereas my jumbo pharaoh are slightly more reactive. They're certainly not a flighty or skittish bird. And I'm very grateful for that. I've heard there's some other varieties of quail, um, that are a little more skittish. They're not skittish, but they seem just more curious about me. They're calmer. And we hatched all of them in our kitchen. So you were hatching, and this was your first experience with hatching uh, quail. Had you hatched chickens before? We've always gotten our chickens as day one or two day old. So I'd never hatched an egg. That was a whole nother round of awe and amazement. Wow. So you really did jump in like, like brand new stuff all yep. around. And, and how was the hatching experience for you? Beautiful and hard. <laughs> I, I think accepting um, an average of 50% hatch rate, that, that especially even compared to nature, that gave me great comfort. So we actually got a higher rate than that. Uh, we got closer to about 65% hatch rate, which I felt really good about. We started off with two inexpensive Amazon um, incubators and then upgraded to the nurture right 360 after that. Um, one of the incubators was crap. Another one was decent and I would actually recommend it. So to get started in raising your own food, there are some inexpensive ones you can start off with. But it was hard. It was hard. I made a couple of mistakes for sure. I paid extraordinary attention and they were right here in our, we have an open living room kitchen. So I could check on the humidity and I did all the things. Uh, 
but I made one, one big mistake. What was that? I helped one out of the show. Mm -hmm. And all the reasons why people say not to do them are all the reasons you shouldn't do it. So <laughs> I said, I'd never do it again. And there was a jumbo Pharaoh that was a celadon. And that little chick lived for seven days and did not grow a centimeter. And if you've seen quail grow by day three, they're getting their pin feathers. It's astronomical, the rate that they grow and develop. So I had to call him. I promised myself after I let help that first chick out, I would never do it again. And so second batch, I did it again. And in that one, within 15 minutes, I knew I needed to call that baby chick. Um, what I should have done, I believe, is just unplugged the, just unplugged it and let him go to sleep. Um, and said I helped him out. And then I had to call him myself. And that I felt that was an easy, hard thing to do. It was the absolute cool. right thing to do. And it wasn't, it's physically instantaneous. Um, but you have to be prepared for that. Don't help them. <laughs> and sometimes you're going to have to call. How, how long ago did you start? <laughs> Not much more than 90 days. It's been a whirlwind. Oh, wow. So four months. Scary. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything that has surprised you in in uh, in raising quail for the first time? So much. The absolute awe of having them, of hearing their little peeping inside of the shell. And then also they respond to your voice, which I blew me away. They'll, it'll be quiet in there. And I would start talking to them, just not even, I talked to my houseplants. I didn't think that much of it. And they would start, I could hear them inside the egg. They would talk back to me. So that kind of connection start to finish. And many of these will ultimately become meat. And I, we've done meat chickens before. So it is such an honor and an awe to be a complete part of a life cycle of knowing every moment of their life that they had a good life and being able to see that development. And it's, it's that is really surprising. And you mentioned that you, this is something you are doing on your own, but your daughter's there and, and your husband, how, what kind of reactions have you gotten from your family? They are so enjoying it as well. One thing I really like is that of course you're going to get some males and they are almost silent. Chickens are not quiet. Even all females, chickens are not quiet. Your neighbors will know if you have chickens, that they don't want you to have chickens. We don't have a problem with that, thankfully, but the Whale, well, their little bird song of the males, which is pretty infrequent. It really does sound like a wild bird from time to time. And it it is so lovely. My husband built all the infrastructure for me. Uh, and he also just really is enjoying, I do the rest now moving forward with the care. Uh, that was, <laughs> I definitely needed help with the building all of the hutches and a home for them. Uh, but he's very much enjoying it. And I'm really excited when I told him when I did the math. So when I did the cost per pound of what I think I can get in meat and eggs, he was even more excited about that. Oh, so you calculated that out down to cost per pounds for, for everything before you even started. Yes. Yeah. I had my presentation ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're paying a lot for local grass-fed organic beef and a lot of that we're able to get gratefully grass finished all of it so if we're paying for that then it just makes sense uh we can have this greatly low low price point me and then pay more for this so it kind of averages it kind of balances out a little bit so far you've just gotten eggs right right Okay. All right. And uh, what's been the reaction from your family for the for, uh, the eggs? Have you started cooking with them on, on yeah. the way? That has been another joy. So there's two things about the cooking with them. As you can imagine, when I share with friends, oh, we have about 25 now and I'm, I'm planning to build up to, I think we have 35 in total. Uh, I'm planning to build up to a hundred, a flock of a hundred. And they are like, well, you're going to need that many. And they tease me about the little tiny eggs compared to my chicken eggs and how many I'll need and all that. But when I tell them, but cup for cup, you are getting so much more out of that quail egg, far more protein, really high in the B vitamins, which everyone's buying supplements for. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping to fill my family up on quail eggs. And it's, it's fun. 
especially as we've made some really quick dietary changes to bring curiosity and joy, these little tiny blue eggs sitting on our counter and my daughter cooking teeny tiny little fried eggs for herself. Um, it makes whole food fun. So both of those, just the simple joy of them is worth it. But knowing I'm getting so much more nutrition into every bite with the quail eggs. We've come up with a lot of recipes. Have you seen the scrambled egg chocolate pudding? What? So, not all kids love scrambled eggs. You know, how many times are you going to give them eggs um, for a meal? Essentially, I scrambled up a bunch of quail eggs in butter, probably six quail eggs, and then about a quarter cup of cacao or cocoa powder, whatever you have, a pinch of salt, and then I used about two tablespoons of honey. Maple syrup would be totally equivalent or sugar, whatever, whatever you use. Blend that. I would, I have a Vitamix. I don't think you'll need a high tech blender to make this. It was so creamy, so delicious. Both my husband and my daughter thought it tasted like store-bought chocolate pudding, which I don't know the last time they had that. It was delicious. And the main ingredient was scrambled quail eggs. I, I have seen a similar recipe and used it um, with avocados. I've so done the avocado. Yeah. And that's really good, but I hadn't thought of using quail eggs. Yes. I, I need to try that. Can we post your recipe? Um, Absolutely. And, okay. Yeah, I'll try to find, I think it's one of those viral ideas. So it's certainly not my original. 10 years ago, I also did the avocado, but our whole family loves avocados. So I never want to doctor the, you know, we just like avocados. So I don't want to doctor the taste of it. But what I do want to do is get more quail eggs in my family for all of those nutritional benefits. So I am delighted on this find. Feels like a little gem. Yeah, definitely. I definitely want to try that. So thank you for sharing that with that with us, and I'll, I'll post it um, down below here. Absolutely. All right. So, um, what have been the biggest uh, challenges of raising quail so far? Um, you definitely want to make sure you keep their food and water full. So we have, I'd heard a lot about the cup system. So the little cup with the, um, I don't know all my right yeah. words. Yeah. With the little le lever in the middle that they push down and it fills up with water. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I have found another difference between quail and chickens. They're not a wild bird yet. They are born intuitively. They look around, they find their food and water immediately. Um, they're very different than chickens in that way. So we had no problem with them teaching themselves to go from a quail waterer also important for chicks, to the cup system. And everyone says they leak and ours, half of them leaked. So we just used plumber's tape. My husband just took it back off and used, you can either use a putty or a tape so they didn't leak. That's yeah. very important because people say they'll get aggressive if they even fear they're getting low. Chickens get grumpy. If, mm. if, no, quail, go, no, mm, don't do it. So you have to make sure it is t totally full. Um, so we have a, a bucket and a, a gravity system for our cups. We really, we really like that one. You have to make sure that you don't run out. So when you, so you unscrew the cups and then you put the Teflon tape around the, the threaded part. Exactly. And then it back in and that was enough to stop the leaking? Zero leaks. Yep. Good to know. <laughs> Thanks for that tip. Yeah. And these were rich, really inexpensive little cups. Uh, yeah, we've had zero leaks since then. Some of them started standing on the water. And then, of course, it continues. Um, but then I would just go just tap on the. I was, of course, they're my new babies out there. So I was out there all the time. I, and they don't do that anymore. I think it was just one that liked that perch. And I would just try to get them off. And so we haven't had problems. But if you had a leak, you could run out of water. And you definitely don't want to do that. When I was learning to identify the males and the females, well, of course, I'm still learning. Um, I, I don't think I did it correctly the first time, but that second time we went through and did it again. And I looked for the bump next to the vent. So the males have a bump that the females don't. And I didn't catch that the first time. So my husband and I did it together the second time and I, and I had made some mistakes, but I keep checking for eggs and my males that are separated have yet to lay. So <laughs> I'm sure I got it right this time. Good. <laughs> yeah. So just, it's just learning, you know, a learning experience and uh, making sure you're paying attention. I know with chickens, there's a lot of auto and automatic stuff and um, quail are even more hands off. So finding still a way that they're in a location, um, I could imagine, it could be really easy to not notice that you have a really aggressive male that might be, we had some, some of the, not exactly scalping, but I could start to see 
like you might see in an overbred chicken. I was starting to see that. So I found the aggressor and he's no longer harming his friends. So you're separating the males out right now. And uh, as, so you haven't had your first butchering experience yet. Is that right? That's this weekend. Okay. So butchering is not new to you. You've done that. Correct. I yeah. have. Yeah. Only two rounds, but you know, about 50 chickens perhaps total. Um, yeah. And that is, I, again, when you're there from start to finish, it's an honor. Mm-hmm. I feel just gratitude and um, there's no reason for guilt or shame over being a part of the cycle of life. So it's not it's not easy to know that you are ending this life in this moment, but it, you just do it in gratitude, knowing that you did your best and maybe made some mistakes along the way, but it's, you did your best. Um, so I feel really good about that. I think this one, I love the idea of the little tiny complete skin on, but I'm not going to go for the dunking and the defeathering and all that in my butchering. So I'm just getting the three buckets. I've got my decent shears, not the hundred dollar one. So I'm just going to do just basically harvesting the meat. And I would like to actually save the livers. I love chicken liver and turkey pate. So I'm going to, I'm curious, I'm only doing six to start with. And so uh, I'm actually really curious to see what I can harvest from the organs to cook either for my dogs um, or save all the livers until I have enough to make it worth the batch of pate to really utilize as much of the bird as I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would love to know how how that turns out and, and what you think about that when you get all, all done with it. Yeah. I'm glad to share. I've heard of others. Uh, growing quail just for dog meat to feed their dogs because it's so it can be so clean and small space and I don't have space for that I don't want to feed my family first my dogs get plenty of good food but some organs would be good I think (laughs) yeah it's a nice treat every once in a while right yeah you mentioned that you chose to have celadons because you know nobody in your area is raising them and it might be something different because you wanted to ultimately like have the quail pay for themselves. Can you tell me more about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my goal, especially because um, well, to be really clear, however one is able to feed their quail or feed your chickens or whatever your feed is is great. And the way a chicken and a quail is able to convert that into meat and eggs is great, whatever that is. Not everyone has access to organic and not everyone is able to allot a budget to either start that way or do that. So there's zero judgment on doing that. However, because we do take so much energy and time to source local, we try to do organic, we are using food as part of our overall healing and wellness. I wanted to spend the money on the organic feed. We are prioritizing it. And it can also set us apart in the marketplace because others are not offering organic quail eggs. So another reason why, if I I can make it simply pay for itself, just pay for itself, then um, I can charge a little bit more because the feed costs more. But then I can up that even, even more because you just can't get organic quail eggs around me. So I feel like... um, like when we got chickens, I wanted to get four. And my husband said, we have room for 12. So get 12, sell the eggs, you know, it pays for itself. And then the, buy more seeds for the garden with that cash, et cetera. So I'm thinking the same for the quail is to not, not overdo my tipping point of time and energy because feeding six feeders is one thing, but 24, you know, there's a tipping point for everybody on just because they're small. <laughs> so starting slow and building up. Uh, but I do hope to differentiate myself in that way. And then my family gets the benefit. Yes. And I would love, I love your idea of renting um, the incubator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, catching, catching a home program. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much of a business I would turn that into, but simply selling the fertilized eggs mm-hmm. so that they could invest in just getting started. And then whatever feed is important to them or they have access to is great because you can create, again, cup for cup, you're getting so much bioavailable nutrients that are so easy to digest. You can eat them in the form of chocolate pudding. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I have done um, 
Now, not everyone does raw eggs, but I eat my own raw chicken eggs and I will put the shell washed in my Vitamix. And I have made myself smoothies with that as a free calcium supplement. Uh, you could bake it and then it's, no, you know, don't use a raw egg. You could bake it and kill off any perceived pathogens and then put that in your Vitamix. So I'm going to play with the um, quail eggs. Wait, back up a little bit. I've never heard of this. So you you can take your your shell, your chicken shell shells or, or quail shells and mix them up in a Vitamix and then you like make a powder out of it and exactly. then you can add that to smoothies? You could, but I do the easy route. Just like I don't make hemp seed milk. I just put hemp seeds in my smoothie with water and then it becomes creamy and high in minerals. So what I do is I wash my chicken egg. I don't wash them generally, but before I consume the shell, I wash it with soap and water and then I put the egg in my blender. And that's that. And then I make a smoothie. So it's bananas and blueberries. The, the whole egg. Whole, the whole egg. The whole egg. Okay. And so in egg. Vitamix, it grinds it up so that you can't, like, you're not chewing on your, on your. You're shoes. not chewing. You're not chewing. Someone who is looking for that, you're probably going to get a little bit of a bite, like a, um, like a chalky, you know, at the, you're going to get a little bit of that if you're looking for it. Um, but a free calcium supplement in, I believe, a really bioavailable way is great. Now, if you don't do raw eggs, and many don't, and many shouldn't for lots of great reasons, you can bake them in the oven to dry them, killing any pathogens you're worried about, and then put that dried eggshell without a raw egg and do the same. A lot of people are doing that for their chickens, but I just crush up my eggs and give that to them. I've never had a problem with pecking. Okay, but for yeah. me, I have to powder. Yeah, I've heard of like drawing the shells and, and grinding them up and feeding them back to the birds, to chickens and quail, but I haven't had, I've talked to anybody who's like actually used that themselves for a calcium supplement. And yeah, what a great idea. Can't hurt. Oh, I don't believe it can. <laughs> so I'm going to try it with the quail eggs, but they're much thicker. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if it's, you know, still enjoyable. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd like to know how that goes too. That's fair. Sure. So I really appreciate you, Amy, sharing your journey. I'd love to check in with you to see, because you've got goals of, of, you know, selling the eggs and, and selling hatching eggs and kind of becoming more involved with your community that way. And I'd love to follow up with you later on to see how that particular part of your journey is going. I would be so, so glad to share. It's been such a joy. I have no regrets. So I highly recommend Quail University. Coal early, coal hard, and you can do this. You can do this with free things off of Craigslist. You can do this whatever feed you have access to. And as you go along your journey, you'll you'll figure out what's important to you. And um, but just getting started and having that access to just the eggs. You don't even have to do the meat. I think it can be so empowering for a lot of folks to eat even cleaner in a way that is getting harder and harder to do, but they're so low maintenance and so fun. I think so many more people can do this that don't know that they can. So thanks for having me and thanks for sharing. And I think this interview will help inspire other people who are just getting started. So appreciate you taking the time. All right. Take thanks, you. Amy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.